Scene one, the mansion house, Pa Ubu, Ma Ubu. Well, here I am, the mayor of London, and I've already got the galloping sheds. <laughs> and they're just about to bring me my ceremonial link and jockstrap. Hasn't that Imodium formed you up yet? Perhaps you should switch from the speedos to those pink Bermuda shorts I got you at Centre Parks last year. Ah oh, yes, the Bertie Smothers. They certainly clear the infinity pool. You come here, you fat bastard. Give me a squeeze. <laughs> Let's slip into the press room and be utterly, utterly appalling. <laughs> Maybe we should invite Anton Deck to show our gratitude. Who? Those jolly but when some they pissed off in the jungle, yes? You are very wrong, Carol, but I saw them sharing a Twix just half an hour ago. <laughs> well, we don't need them now. I wouldn't even give them the nuts off my cornetto. What about that time? What about that time with the cornetto and your nuts? That was just a misunderstanding with the nuts of us. And put that little meerkat mandelson out of your mind, he you couldn't bust a grave in a food fight. Do you think and Deck could have him in a celebrity cage fight. <laughs> That's not a bad idea. I bet Dave would sponsor it. We could capture Ed Balls, dress him as a Roman, and make him fight a Komodo dragon. We need to recoup some of those monies we made. <laughs> we wasted on pizza. And why did I let you take it? To And why did I let you talk me into buying 10,000 gallons of Spike Zero? Listen to me, Boris! Listen to me, Boris! Remember the time Mandy got pissed from just being in the lift with Charles Kennedy? <laughs> this Sprite Zero will have him cutting checks to Rihanna in full view of the public eye. I'm not wasting good carbonated water, citric acid, natural lemon and lime flavour, sweetness, aspartame, preservative, and 311, and acidity regulator on that little shit. <laughs> Just relax about Mandelson, he's probably going off to five days to live in that caravan of his with that fully functional chemical toilet. Oh, please yourself, Boris, but don't be surprised if you end up with a flagging whip. Flagging whip? Try this for party discipline. <laughs> Night, Pear Ubu is asleep. Mayor who enters without seeing him, it is completely dark. I've not been so glad to see a little chef since the night the escort agency sent over Frankie de Tori, wearing nothing but an apron and a cheeky grin. What a journey. First, I'm chased from Madame Two Swords by the shade of flamboyant frontman Freddie Mercury, and then almost killed by a barrage of now unfashionable order from outside Jamie Oliver's restaurant. And worse still, I lose my most trusted lieutenant, Timmy Mallet, a TV <laughs> presenter, broadcaster and artist, most noticeable for his striking visual style, involving loud shirts, colourful glasses and the giant pink foam mallet and labelled Mallet's Mallet, as well as his utterly brilliant and blah catchphrases. He had the hots for me, no mistake. I caught him looking at me more than once on that team building holiday in Centre Park last year. <laughs> he tried to get into my cabin late at night, saying he wanted to constructively analyse my strengths and weaknesses. <laughs> oh, he would have bent his almost eponymous mallet in two for me. After that, I take to my heels, pursued by the enraged crowd. Luckily, Robin Asquith was <coughs> passing on a milk float and I was able to distract him with a copy of Razzle. <laughs> <laughs> then I was ambushed near Merthyr by the Flying Pickets, a British a cappella vocal group who had a Christmas number one in 1983 at the UK singles chart with their cover of Yazoo's track, Only You. <laughs> they took all of the gold top 
And now they're not even Welsh. Still, here I am. <laughs> Safe. Oh, I'm dead with fatigue and cold. But I'd really like to know what happened to Boris. That overcreamed shoe pastry. I rinsed him good and proper. <laughs> Catch me, Ubu. Sire in a giant colossal bag. Oh, God! Where am I? Oh, the ginster's passed it from the service station. You must give me the strangest visions. I should have had the steak slice. <laughs> Let's pretend to be nice. Well, my old fellow, did you sleep well? You look cute when you're asleep, like a shaved giant panda in M&S Wi-Fi. Like if custard covered log dreams as rocky as a David Hasselhoff YouTube film. What's he burbling about? He's obviously had a bag on the head and woken it into texture. He'll be experimenting with irony next. By Richard Bailey's navel, I swear I heard someone speaking. I'll be fucked with a croquet mallet. Yes, Boris, someone is indeed speaking. Listen to this quavering voice and the hum of the conveyor belt. This is the ghost of Larry Grayson. Who oh, cannot give other than good advice. Shut that door. Oh, I say. <laughs> Don't interrupt me, you naughty boy. Or I'll fix it so you never get your greasy hands on the fondue set. Oh, for the sake of my metronomic giblets, don't mention the fondue set. Apologies. Sponsor Kate further, madame. You're flowing like Jacob's Creek. I was saying, Mr. Ubu, <coughs> you're a somewhat overblown fellow and could do with an enema and a pair of spags, so not necessarily in that order. Very overblown indeed. Got any leeches for this? <laughs> <coughs> Is there a special lady in your life, Pair Ubu? A Guinevere to your Lancelot, a Kim to your Kanye. I'm rather taken with the Tory Virgin of late, you know what I mean, the sister Wendy of the houses. Well, you know what they say, kissing on once, kissing on twice, but whatever you do, don't get in the habit. If <laughs> <laughs> the habit is part of the lure, like looking at French fancies online. You must approach her gently, Boris! <laughs> Sorry, Ubi I mean. fine wines, Belgian chocolates, becoming Prime Minister, Boris. It's very much like making love to a beautiful woman. You flirt, you woo, you hold firm on Gibraltar. And if all else fails, invite the fellow next door in for a threesome. Well, I know what it's like to make love to Gibraltar. A restless night between two rocks and an added dangly bit. You are rambling, Per Ubu. Your wife, Per Ubu, is the perfect woman. She's the only one who can perform the Heimlich manoeuvre on you effectively when you've had one too many individual fruit pies. Yes, when we first met, I knew you were the one, by the way, you opened that tin of pilchers with your teeth. That was no accident. Cherish your wife, terrible. She's a paragon of virtue, whereas you have the morals of a Premier League footballer at a phone party. What do you know about that footballer's phone party? I genuinely dropped that soap. <laughs> what sort of I got? My wife is looser than a mammoth here. Be careful, Per Ubu, who lathers your loofah. Sorry, yes, I forgot who I was talking to. Who else will tweeze in my midriff? Certainly not Ken! You killed him with a with a co comic and, if I'm frank, entirely gratuitous sausage. There's nothing gratuitous about my sausage. But you, you were responsible for the deaths of Dale Winton and Pat Sharp. What a loss those two are to the male grooming industry. It's no wonder there's a recession. Sod's law, they kept, trying, they, kept, they kept trying to touch me. Oh, Pat Sharp would touch anyone. He was a very tactile man. <laughs> and you didn't keep your promise to Anton Deck to get them a gig presenting Newsnight, and then you killed the poor little shits. <laughs> like a farmer drowning a brace of sickly calves. I wanted to preside over the Little Chef franchise, starting just outside Swansea. <laughs> there is only one way for you to be pardoned your misdeeds. What is it? I'm quite prepared to die, trim my locks, and become unrecognisable from Ronan Keating. I won't eat all of the advent calendar in one morning. I'll flush after. Uh, I watch how the other women leave me wife after I flush. Whatever it is, we will just say. You must forgive, Mo Ubu. For tampering with Ken's <clears throat> penis ring at Madame Tussauds. <laughs> this is what I'll do. If she gives me a piggyback to Springfellows, we can forget about it. 
He's hopelessly forgotten. He was part from string fellows after trying to pay for a table dance with a Tesco club card. <laughs> <laughs> but it's getting light, and I can see that pain, puzzled expression flickering in his eyes. He's either starting to recognise me, or he's about to let rip a big one. <laughs> now I know for sure that my beloved is beyond the fiddle. Being the king of birdie smugglers, it won't be the first time she's been caught with her hands in the trail. Timmy Mallet is dead, and I was chased by the executives of Sovereign. I'm haunted by Timmy's tragic face, still smiling beneath that crooked baseball cap as they covered him in onions and taunted him with a bewildering array of breads and relishes. Well, it was those unreconstructed scargalites that chased me out. Timmy has more brain cells in his little pink mallet than they've got between them. Arthur is more a man than you'll ever be. He took me for a ride around <clears throat> Barnsley in his larder that I'll never forget. <laughs> then why don't you try riding this? <laughs> <laughs> this reminds me of the time Prince Harry chased me out of Buckingham Palace after I spurned his off the chair some bachelor super noodles in the nude. Crawl into that cupboard and find those Wallace and Gromit slippers you got me a few Christmases ago. Now I'm going to give you more than a slipper up the arse. <laughs> Think of my hemorrhoids! They're up like Calamata olives! Oh, what have you found in there? Look at my collection of broken air face planes. I was in utero. My god, you found it all. The clumps of pulled out hair, the lolly sticks with jokes on, a box of those, uh, those, those, uh, those luminescent wibbly things you put in the end, pencils that say I rule, my spare high heels, a piece of Benny Hill's left buzzer, a limited edition go ox you could. Calm down, Boris, you'll shit yourself again. <laughs> like the time you read Cheryl Cole at the Royal Variety performance. Thank you. <laughs>